Aside from the fact that my, my sister taught me how to read when I was three years old by uh, using Peanuts books, you know, from the... And I think by, by, yeah, by the time I was 11 or 12, I was a full-blown comic geek. I've been an artist all my life, and I, and I started out as a comic book artist, ironically. I was a, a penciler for, for many years, and, uh, and I started out at DC, worked for Image and Event and a whole bunch of companies over the years. So uh, uh, somehow I kind of uh, transitioned into video games, and here I am. There's always been a kind of natural alignment between the sort of stories that we're telling in games and the kinds of stories that comics can do super well. You know, video games are kind of in the moment. And so character development is always a tough thing. And, and with comic books, it's the perfect forum for it. As far as Splinter Cell is concerned, you know, you've got this incredible, rich, elaborate, sometimes even Byzantine geopolitical world that Sam Fisher needs to navigate and sneak his way through. You know, we get a chance to see um, different parts of his life and his career. People have this sense that there's some history there. And even people who haven't necessarily played all the Splinter Cell games know that this is a character who has some backstory. He, he's, he's been around the block a few times. When this project came about, we set out to look for artists and writers, and we basically looked for guys that we liked. In order to get the best possible product on the comics pages, we needed guys who were at the top of their game, but also specifically had an interest in the kinds of themes and the kinds of genre that we were talking about. I've worked on a number of different books. Uh, Olympus, Greek Mythology, The Light was a horror book, and then I started uh, a number of books, um, Who is Jake Ellis, Dancer, and The Activity, which were in a more spy, spy-fi, uh, espionage, military area. Each book was very distinct from the others, but the activity especially is what got me the attention that, that brought me into the Splinter Cell project. What was important for a creator like me coming on board is that it wasn't a world totally foreign to me, both because I was familiar with the game and uh, because you know I'd done a lot of my own research. Uh, but the world was so well put together and thought out that the pieces were already there to play with. If you look at Nathan's work on projects like the, uh, you know, who's Jake Ellis, the activity dancer. He clearly understands that world. He clearly understands those characters in a way that's incredibly honest and authentic. They told us we want an original story. Uh, we knew where it needed to begin and where it needed to end up to fit in the Splinter Cell canon, to fit in the timeline of you know, Sam Fisher's career. But we were allowed to be creators. If you want to get a good result in terms of comics, you need to bring in a good team that you trust. You need to give them, you know, kind of the key pillars of what the franchise is about and what the characters are about, what the brand is about. And then you need to give them a lot of latitude to explore that the way they would explore it like any other comics project. The challenges of, you know, working on a, a project like this is that we want to both, you know, be respectful and, you know, we, we want to write a book that the hardcore fans recognize and love and that new readers who perhaps haven't even played the games before can come into. They start to find the, the sweet spot, the equilibrium point between what we need for as a you know as a brand building exercise and what the, the comics reader needs as a comics reader and I think that um, from there it's been really easy. You know, they've, they've made it almost effortless for us because they're so good.